Hello everyone. Uh, so this is uh, this is a continuation of the module three. Last session I had completed uh, till uh, traps and different types of traps. Uh, so this will be the continuation of it. So in this session I'll be talking about uh, materials of uh, construction for pipes and uh, different types of walls used in the uh, uh, piping system to control the flow of the water. So those two topics will be covered in this session. Briefly we have covered uh, uh, different types of pipes in the module 2 and uh, described about different types of pipes in the module 2 overall. But uh, in this particular presentation which is used in the building is uh, which is what I am explaining now. So uh, in that we will go through unplasticized sized PVC pipes. Unplasticized PVC pipes these are called as UPVC pipes. UPVC pipes are very rigid. Uh, difference between UPVC and unplasticized pipes are when PVC is usually rigid, when we add plasticizers to it, it becomes softer. It can be uh, deformed into any other shapes. So since plasticizers are not added in the PVC, with the PVC, so they are called as UPVC pipes. Nowadays UPVC, pipe, UPVC material is used for windows, doors, also for all the openings uh, uh, instead of wooden, instead of wood. So this is used in building plumbing also. So these pipes are called as UPVC pipes. They are very rigid and they are light in weight. PVC is usually light in weight and but very tough. They come in longer length. It is not short. They come in, they are available only in longer lengths. So due to its uh, uh, length, availability of length, they are very much expensive for transportation. And handling cost also is very difficult for these lengthier ones. Okay. So, but uh, these end up in having a very smooth internal surface. The pipe's internal surface is very smooth. So that there is a less, less friction which results in saving energy. They are not suitable for hot water. These UPVC pipes cannot be provided for hot water because the chemical composition of these PVC pipes can react with the hot water. Can be used for sievers, main sievers, it can be used for main sievers, can be used for soil pipes, waste pipes, rainwater also, it can be used. Then we have CPVC pipes. First one we saw was UPVC pipes. This is CPVC pipes. CPVC stands for chlor uh, chlorination of the polyvinyl chloride resin. Chlorination of the polyvinyl chloride resin. When you do that with chlorination, they are called as, they come under the category of thermoplastic. They are called as CPVC pipes. They are very common. These type of pipes are used very commonly in most of the buildings. And uh, it is uh, resistant to degradation and provides a life lifelong service span. So the degradation of the water, since we use, uh, since all kinds of water is allowed through this, that is uh, salt water, chlorinated water, uh, waste water, soil water, everything is allowed into these pipes. The internal surface may corrode or they may get degraded the pipes may get degraded because of the content. So this gives a longer life comparatively. In fact, the first piping systems using CPUC occurred in 1951. When we go back to 1951, that is the, that is the time when this was, these were used. CPVC pipes, as you see, this is one common color which is widely used that is off-white, light grey. It is also available in light grey or 
hello it is most suitable for commercial applications rather than residential applications it is also very much suitable for hot water distribution systems so uh, being in this profession it is very important for us to remember that uh, what type of pipes to be used for different uh, uh, water supplies for cold water what kind of pipes for hot water what kind of pipes so we are we are supposed to be aware of that so uh, this is something as soon as we say hot water like which is used through geysers or centralized hot water systems this can be suggested cpv uh, pipes can be used so this chlorinated polyvinylite poly, polyvinyl chloride is piping made from chlorinated polyvinyl chloride it is a thermoplastic then comes ppr pipes this is also a new type of uh, piping which has a thicker circumference and uh, uh, the thickness of the pipe is more and this is presently uh, ppr pipes and fittings are most reliable in plumbing cp in fact upvc cpvc are replaced by ppr pipes it is quite expensive but they are replaced because of the durability and water supply plants due to their chemical features and fusions welding which ensures the plumbing to have a perfect seal tight system what it actually means is now see we see these joints this is the pipe and this is the t joint okay so this is the z joint so t joint what happens we we'll, we are supposed to use these kind of uh, fixtures in between to turn the pipe length or to take the water in a different direction and uh, to orient them in different direction so in that case this uh, type of uh, joints are supposed to be used so when we use one particular material the same material joints are available so in that case usually in plumbing the joints are the weakest part so in that weakest part what happens the water starts leaking in the joints right so that has to be uh, avoided in this kind of uh, this particular pipe has a less leakage because of the uh, material which is been used its softness and uh, it uh, firmly uh, sits in the joint the joint is very firm leakages are less so it seals tightly so that's the reason this is mostly used nowadays it can be used for both hot water and as well as cold water they are very eco friendly cost effective they are polypropylene random copolymer ppr is polypropylene random copolymer which is a piping made from a polypropylene with a random blend of long and short hydrocarbon chains this is also product of a thermoplastic but this is more cost effective and eco friendly environmental friendly comparatively with the other material other pipes they are durable enough about 50 years of life and they also are available in white green gray then we have uh, pb water pipes polybutylene pb stands for polybutylene now polybutylene is a form of a plastic resin uh, that was used extensively in the manufacture of water supply piping from 1978 to 1995 so what happened after 1995 this particular pb water pipes are were used from 1978 to 95 after that it was banned they were, they are not used now it is completely banned pb water pipes are not used the reason being when the chlorinated water is passed through this it, the material used to react so it is dangerous for the human health that's the reason this has been banned they were, it was considered it was considered also earlier it was considered as the pipe of the future but whereas now it is not in use 
then we have HDPE high density polyethylene pipes. <coughs> so high density polyethylene pipes, HDPE pipes, you see uh, they are mostly in this uh, black color and uh, they offer smooth interior surfaces. Most of the pipes offer smooth interior surfaces except uh, these materials like GI, copper, these materials plastic uh, pipes are mostly smooth interior surfaces is what is available in that relatively higher resistance to corrosion this doesn't corrode easily they are available in solid wall when laid in straight these pipes we can even lay in straight uh, straight gradients that means we can even lay it straight usually pipes are laid in gradient so that the flow of the water is easy flow of any liquid is easy but these these are the only pipes which can be laid straight and still the flow is easy they can easily offer longer life even if it is laid straight it can easily offer longer life joints are usually fusion welded or flange jointed depending on straight rinse fittings then we have uh, composite piping Composite piping is something where you use more than single material in, in one unit. So here we use different different materials for making a pipe. So uh, high grade virgin polyethylene and aluminium is used in this. So usually it can be 3 layered, 4 layered, 5 layered depending on the uh, requirement. So uh, when we use this uh, middle layer as aluminium, usually aluminium is something which is used as a middle layer and outer layer as a PPR and inner layer is again PPR. Okay. Um, this external layer black one you see is a PPR. Then this alone is an adhesive material. This, uh, this middle one is a uh, aluminium layer then again an adhesive material and the PPR same goes here but the difference is it this pipe this you will have a stiffer pipe and bendable pipe so this is something which is a bendable pipe so in bendable pipe we can use CPVC layer here PPR is used in bendable pipe CPVC layer is used on outside and as well as inside but intermediately aluminium is only used. This is also other type of composite uh, pipes. So here we have uh, four layers, thermoplastic wear resistant layer on the outer surface and the inner surface thermoplastic pressure barrier and there is a bonding layer, green color Pipe, uh, green color layer is called as a glass fiber reinforced epoxy laminate. So these are the different materials which is used for making composite uh, pipes. So this is again uh, P, outer layer is P and inner layer is P and in between you have a aluminium. In composite pipes, they are very uh, less in weight, they are lightweight, very lightweight and they are much corrosion resistant, corrosion does not happen easily and high strength of ease of deployment. These can be, can't be used easily, these composite pipes can't be used easily and connections are the most uh, difficult part here. When we talk about the connections, like when we are turning the direction of the water, then if we are connecting to the fixture, if we are connecting this to the traps, that is the most difficult part because we need the same material or the way we fix the uh, fixture to this should be proper. If there is a problem in that, then the leakage occurs immediately. So when we choose for a composite uh, composite pipes, it, the major issue is connection. It cannot be connected easily. 
because we do not find the same type of material for connections with the fixtures or anything for that matter. So, it requires special technique, there is a special technique for connecting it. So, you need an experienced person to do that or handle it. Then you have uh, shape of these sievers and pipelines uh, are, uh, can be varied. Mostly circle is preferred for uh, pipelines. Less material due to the less material usage uh, is the better form is circle. No corners, that is the most important thing. There, is, there are no corners. So, it, uh, uh, the waste or the water discharged in the pipes will not be stuck anywhere. So, there are no corners, chances of deposition is less, deposition or silt deposition happens is very less, easy to construct and handle, not suitable when flow varies too much. So, but the disadvantage is it is not effective in combined sewerage system, it is negligible compared to the combined flow during rains causing deposition of solids for low velocity of flow. This particular thing is mostly when we connect from uh, in the city level, when we do the sewer line in the city level. The disadvantage can be applicable mostly towards there, but when we are using in the building, uh, it mostly the good advantage we have than the disadvantages. Shape of sewers can be different, basket, sh basket handle shaped, egg shaped, Ovoid, parabolic, rectangular, semicircular. So, you can have different shaped sievers, but still best suited is circular. Even for the plumbing lines, pipelines, circular is the best suited. So, then we will talk about uh, walls, different types of walls used for the control of the water or uh, discharge of fluid. Walls, what is wall? Wall is nothing but a device used to regulate, control or direct or redirect the flow of the fluid by opening, closing, partially obstructing the uh, fluid flow. So, this we will see in detail whereas we will see in, uh, uh, different types of walls used in piping system. But the basic idea is it regulates, controls, directs the water. Now we will see uh, how gate valves are used. This is one type which is uh, used uh, widely in piping system. Gate valves are used to permit or prevent the flow of liquids and or typically for on and off control rather than flow of regulation. So, it is only for on and off control rather than flow of regulation. There is no fl uh, uh, flow regulation happening here. You cannot, we cannot control the water flow uh, quantity. Uh, we cannot regulate that, but we can off and on. We can, uh, we can uh, put off, the, shut off the wall, then the water flow is stopped. When we open, the water flow is uh, left. So, the prevent uh, flow, flow of liquids, whether you can prevent or allow the liquid. So, that is the, abil uh, that is the ability of gate wall. So, this because of this ability, this is mostly used in petroleum industry also. And uh, they are used in different uh, services. It could be air, fuel gas, feed water, steam, lube oil, hydrocarbon, like this, these walls are used in many other services also. But when it comes to water supply or uh, plumbing, uh, this is the basic uh, diagram which we see for uh, gate walls. Yeah, this is one, one type of gate wall which you see, okay. So, now, here you have this hole on either side. So, inlet and outlet would be connected from there and then you have a control over here. So, there are the basic function of that is now you have a pipe flow in, flow out 
and you have a liver, liver like this. Okay, so this liver can be uh, when it is open. That means when you pull the liver up, the flow will be easy. The flow will be like that. When you shut the liver down, when you put the liver down, the flow is stopped. The flow is stopped here only. So that is as simple as that. When it is open, when the liver, when you rotate this, the liver gets liver will be open. That opens the flow. When you close it, it just directly closes the flow, flow of the water. So this is uh, called as gate valve. In this valve, then we have next valve, globe valve. Globe valve is used to stop, start and regulate. In the other gate valve, it was only stop. Here, a stop and start in the gate wall. But here we can actually regulate the flow of the water. How do we do that? So, globe walls are used in the systems where flow control is required and leak tightness is also necessary. So, you uh, this is something uh, uh, how globe wall looks, uh, globe wall is there. Now, uh, if you see the cross section of that, the water is let in like this and out. This is in and this is out. So here we have a similar liver like this and a flat plate below. Okay. The only addition between from the previous one is this. This is the addition from the previous one. Earlier it used to close like this, gate wall completely close and open like this. But here you can regulate the flow. Now here what happens when you shut this off completely, it will stop. Now you open a little, you see the liver, it will always have mostly uh, connected with the liver so that it can be controlled to stop in between the opening. So, when this is open, the water is allowed easily. Now, you can get it better here. So, this close against the flow. Now, you can see the flow is here, the disc is closed. Right? This close in flow direction, both of them against the flow direction and uh, open while the flow direction. Then you have Z types globe wall. Z types is nothing but the way, the shape of the globe wall. Gate wall also is al uh, available in Z, uh, Z shape. So, Z type gate wall is also available. Z type globe wall is also available. The simplest and most commonly used, they are most commonly used. So, here what happens, this also has similar like this, the function is same. If you, this is stop, when you close the lever, here it is stopped, when you push it up and if you, if you are stopping here, the flow is regulated, when you uh, pull it completely up, the flow is completely on. Then Y type globe valve is used. This globe valve is again the shape of Y. So the, that's why they are called Y type globe valve. Here also this same function happens. When this lever is rotated, the lever is open and the, this disc is open and the water is flowed easily. Um, uh, depending on the level of opening, the water is float. Then we have ball wall. Ball wall is a form of quarter turn wall which uses a hollow perforated and pivoting ball to control flow through it. So inside the wall, this is quite small type of a wall. So here what happens, so inside there is a globe. Whereas 
uh, either side of the globe is open. So, and this is pivoted here. Now, if the uh, lever is rotated, this circle, this globe is turned towards the surface of this. So, it gets closed. Yeah. So, ball valve is nothing but this, when this uh, hollow surface is along the direction of the pipeline, it is open. When it is turned, when the sliver is turned towards uh, 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 opposite direction, then it, this is closed. The globe also rotates and that is closed. The globe also rotates and the water flow direction is closed. So, it regulates the start and, st uh, start and stop of the water flow. Butterfly valve, then we have butterfly valve. As the name suggests, it is very simple that you have a circular disc and it, it flaps like a butterfly. So, very similar to the globe valve, but this is also a very small thinnest uh, design which we see in uh, walls. So, it is very simple when it is open, it is 90 degree to the circumference, when it is closed, it is along the circumference of the wall. So, a butterfly wall is also a quarter turn. This is also a quarter turn wall and uh, butterfly is also a quarter turn wall, rotary motion wall that is used to stop, regulate and start the flow. Butterfly valve has a short circular body. Butterfly valve is suitable for large valve applications to compact. Lightweight requires considerably less space as compared to other walls. Since the design is so simple and small, it can be used where you have less space uh, for installation of the valve. Pressure relief valve. Then uh, we come to the last part of the walls. Pressure relief walls. Pressure relief walls. Uh, we had seen uh, these walls introduced in the cold water supply direct system. There, the pressure was uh, if the pressure had to be controlled since there are no pumps and other things. This relief or safety wall, pressure safety wall or pressure relief wall are used from the mains. So, similarly it can be used in many other possible ways. A pressure relief wall or pressure safety wall, it can be called either relief wall or safety wall, used to protect equipment or piping system during an over pressure of event. Since uh, as I explained in the morning uh, in the other session that uh, um, the main when the water is supplied directly from the main supply to the building, the pressure is uncontrollable. So, these vaults are used in that kind of scenarios. So, to control the pressure of the water. Also, it can be to control the event of the vacuum. When the vacuum creates to control that, also it can be used. So, uh, this has uh, one extra addition with to that, that is a pneumatic air supply lever towards this side and the piston to close the flow, flow of the water. So, this is, uh, this is how it looks, pressure relief wall. So, here we have this uh, inlet, outlet and the main valve, main valve is here which is completely closed in this image and then the secondary pressure, then the pist piston is there, this whole thing is a piston again. Then there is one more uh, uh, piston on top, that is a primary piston. When once this primary piston is pushed down, the secondary piston closes. When it has to be opened, this primary piston has to be opened and the air pressure is also controlled with the pressure of this. Yeah. 
plumbing of uh, small houses now plumbing of uh, small houses can be uh, if with respect to the houses what can be done for plumbing now this is one one uh, example example which i have shown here uh, you see a site with the building okay uh, this is uh, this consists of living dining guest room kitchen wash area toilet shower area so this is the building footprint building footprint is this okay so here we have shower area here toilet and shower area here kitchen and wash area now the closet is here and uh, wash uh, shower area is here and a bathtub is here wash area is here where we can uh, keep uh, uh, taps and you wash utensils and it can be used for uh, placing uh, um, uh, washing machines also then the sink is here now how do we do the plumbing for these kind of fixtures the plumbing can be now inside the layouts we have seen different methods of doing it now in the toilet if it is in the first floor or different levels we can have sunken slab raised floor like that we can provide and connect the pipes uh, connect the pipes outside the building and take it out so internally i will be explaining again in the further slides but as in overall now we have a building and we have located these things here so how do we take out the connection to the outside now all these pipes are connected with inspection chambers these are inspection chambers except this this is an intercepting chamber morning i uh, in the previous session i was explaining about intercepting chamber so these are inspection chamber these are inspection chambers now all the pipes which is taken are connected to these inspection chambers then this inspection chambers are connected again we, uh, it is not possible to have only one or two inspection chambers every 50 meter maximum 50 meter length we can have inspection chambers minimum can be 20 meters 15 to 20 meters depending on the site but maximum is 50 meter where we can have inspection chamber so number of inspection chambers are placed at every turning of pipeline inspection chambers are pl placed now all these pipes all these are connected to this inspection chamber now this kitchen and wash area pipes are connected to this inspection chamber so from this inspection chamber again pipes are laid horizontally in the ground and there is one more turning turning uh, inspection chamber at the uh, one more inspection chamber at the turning to change the gray, uh, change the direction of the flow so at that particular inspection chamber then again you have a special uh, you have a uh, opening here and opening here uh, the waste is uh, the waste is uh, direction waste direction is turned now from this inspection chamber since the length of the site is more we need to give one more inspection chamber here because the site length is more so from here from this inspection chamber all the waste the whole building waste is taken to the intercepting chamber intercepting chamber is uh, as explained in the previous slide that intercepting chamber from that intercepting chamber where we have an intercepting trap it goes to the manhole manhole which is located on the road 
So, this is the way you take out the waste from the building. All the waste, the whole building waste is taken to the intercepting chamber. Intercepting chamber is uh, as explained in the previous slide, that intercepting chamber from that intercepting chamber where we have an intercepting trap, it goes to the manhole. Manhole which is located on the road. So, this is the way you take out the waste from the building. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this, uh, uh, these are the details which you mention for uh, providing pipes, dimensions of pipes, what is the length of the pipe, what material of pipe you provide and the gradient of the pipe laid in each length. Say for example, here we see ultra low capacity WC 3.5 liter plus flush. Uh, it is, uh, Per flush, 3.5 liters of water is used in the closet, water closet. Since uh, nowadays we have got lesser than that uh, due to the concept of sustainability, this one uh, sanitary fitting, the size of the pipes for that is 75 mm and the maximum length is 10 meter. The gradient laid from that to the sewage, uh, sewer lines is not flatter than 1 is to 50. So, in this if we have to see from the wash basin, the pipe which is laid to the inspection chamber has to have a gradient of 1 is to 15. Gradient is nothing but the slope which is followed. If this is 1, this is 50. If this is 1 meter, this is 50 meter. So, that is the slope which is being followed by the for laying the pipes. So, similarly you calculate the gradients and size and length of the pipes for each of the fixture. Yeah, this is a detailed uh, um, section of inspection chambers. Inspection chambers as I showed here, these are the inspection chambers. So, what happens in that inspection chambers? Once the discharge happens from the closet, the discharge is taken either through the wall and outside of the wall and uh, taken into the inspection chamber or you can even, it can be even directly taken below and taken to the inspection chamber which is very closer to the uh, to that far particular fixture right so from there uh, there is an inlet happening to that then it goes to the outlet the purpose of this inspection chamber is to clean if something is stuck here then a person uh, a concerned person will come and remove the cover frame cover which is provided here and clean this pipeline. So, from this pipeline the cl cleaned water goes back to the uh, goes back to the another inspection chamber. So, here what we are seeing is from two points from one, one toilet one pipe is connected from the other toilet other pipe is connected to the inspection chamber. So, for the same inspection chambers you can even connect two to three connections also, take two to three connections also. Not just the uh, closets, you can, we can even see bath, bathing tub from the uh, connection from the bathing area which is taken down to the floor, uh, floor trap. From the floor trap the connection is there and from the floor waste the connection is there to this and from the closet. So, all the pipes which has to be taken are connected to the inspection chambers and from there other inspection chambers which are closer to that 
then to the finally to the intercepting chamber, then to the manhole. So, this is the layout, plumbing layout when it is considered with respect to the uh, site, how it can be drained out from the building to the site. So, we look at the systems of plumbing further. In systems of plumbing, uh, we have few types like single stack system, one pipe system, one pipe system partially ventilated, two pipe system. Single stack system, uh, in this single stack system what happens is, as I already mentioned, there will be waste water pipes and soil water pipes, soil pipes. So, soil pipes are up are the pipes which are connected from water closets and urinals. Waste water pipe is the pipe which, which are where the uh, waste water is connected from wash basins, bathing areas, bathtubs, sinks. These are the waste water pipe which is connected from these equipments to the waste water pipes. So, these two are the common pipes which are always there in any uh, plumbing system. So, in single, single, single stack system what happens? There is only one, one connection, one pipe connected for waste water as well as soil. So, only one continuous pipe has connections of waste water and soil. So, these are the uh, so, when this is merged, it is called as single systems. The other criteria why it is called a single, single stack system is because there is no ventilation, separate ventilation is provided for single stack systems. So, in this system what happens? As I already mentioned that all the equipments need to be connected to the ventilation. Sin but uh, this is one of the earliest systems which were used, which was used in the uh, plumbing systems. So, that time there was no separate uh, uh, venting pipe provided for these equipments. So, it is one single pipe used for uh, only for drainage of water, not for anything else. Venting was not there. Okay. Then we have one pipe system, a single stack system and one pipe system are quite similar, but not same. In single stack system, though it is one pipe, no vent is there, all the equipments are connected to that. In one pipe system, what happens is, you have a venting provided for soil pipe on top. You see this? over the top floor that is over the top floor there is a vent provided that means all the foul gases of the equipments are escaped through the vent pipe above. So, one pipe system is a system that collect all soil and waste water into one common pipe. So, here you see soil and waste pipe. So, that is this thicker soil and waste pipe all the water drained into that, all the water is drained into that pipe and that is also vented above and all the branch ventilating pipes will connect into the one main ventilating pipes. This small pipe which you see is a vent pipe. So, you will have one soil and waste pipe and vent pipe separately for ventilating the foul gases coming from all the sanitary fittings. Then we have two pipe system. In two pipe system, we have uh, uh, one, one for waste stack, one for ventilation of uh, waste stack and another for soil stack and ventilation of that soil stack pipe, right. So, here what happens double stack, 
it is not actually double stack, double stack is for the one which we can see, we'll see later, two pipe system, this is two pipe system, one pipe system, two pipe system. In two pipe system what happens? All the soil fixtures that is urinals and closets are drained out to the soil stack. Soil stack is nothing but a vertical pipe, one pipe all the waste water that is water from the traps, water from the closets, water from the wash basins, sorry not from closets, wash basins, traps, bathing areas, bathtubs, kitchen sink, all of these are connected to the waste stack. So, both of all the pipes are ventilated above that is the criteria for any pipes. But the, there is one more vent pipe provided for soil stack and waste stack. So, in the soil stack if you see that is connected with vent, one more pipe, one more vent pipe is provided for closets. So, the foul gas comes through that and it is again uh, the foul gas which is pro produced in the soil stack is also connected to the vent pipe due to the air pressure the air is uh, and it goes into the atmosphere on top. So, it is left out on top. As I already mentioned in the earlier sessions this top portion has to be covered with cowl or a cap. It has to be 150 mm minimum above and 150 centimeter minimum above the terrace level all the pipes. So, similarly we have one more vent pipe this one more vent, vent pipe connected from all the fixtures connected from all the fixtures to one vent pipe. So, that is for waste water equipment. So, when we have two vent pipes for wa soil waste, soil water and waste water and when we have uh, uh, separate drain pipes for uh, all the soil equipments and waste water equipments, then it is called dub two pipe system. In one pipe the difference is you have only one pipe for all the fixtures, drain pipe and one vent pipe for all the fixtures. Okay. And there are two sets of pipes, soil pipes connected and waste water pipe connected. So, totally four pipes are provided for two pipe system. So, this is quite expensive, but very clearly segregated. So, it is uh, it works well also. Then the double stack, here what happens? Here again uh, all the connection from the soil pipe and waste water pipe are connected uh, to uh, waste water and soil pipe. So, in this soil pipe and waste water it is very similar to one stack this is not ventilated only the drain is provided for both of them. So, they are called this is a double stack. When we are talking about venting, we also discussed about cross venting is in one of the systems that is we see here this is a cross venting from one pipe to the another pipe there is a cross venting happening from the in this from the fixtures also vent is connected and this pipe is again connected uh, to the uh, soil pipe. So, that is cross venting from one pipe to the another pipe you let out the gases. So, cross venting uh, pipe is nothing but uh, pipe between secondary and main discharge stack. This is one stack and this is one stack. This is 100 dia UPVC secondary discharge stack and this is main discharge stack. So, from here it is connected from this to this. So, this particular connection is called as cross venting. The foul gases go from here to here. 
there is there is also necessity for fixture venting so fixture venting is nothing but all the equipments are supposed to be all the equipments which is used for sanitation are supposed to be vented whether it is uh, closets urinals it has to be vented uh, provision of venting is supposed to be done so usually in residences you see this type of uh, systems so where vent pipes are con continuously connected but when we have toilets common toilets or public in public buildings when we have these toilets we will uh, all these individual urinals wash uh, um, water closets shower all these water closets are connected through one common vent pipe okay and then that vent pipe is connected to the vent stack this could be in one level this could be in another level so all these pipes are connected to vent pipe uh, to vent stack all the pipes are connected to the vent stack so the, you, there is a separate drainage stack drainage stack runs always downwards vent stack all runs always upwards that means any connection happening to the vent stack is always upwards so that the air escapes on top drainage is always downwards so that the water waste water drainage happens downwards similarly offset venting system there is something called as offset venting system in single stack vent systems and double stack vent system they can also do partially vented uh, partially stack uh, ventilated stack systems so that is something like this what they do what 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 uh, happens is in that is so when we have this uh, uh, stack vertical stack continuous if uh, there is no provision of taking it behind further directly it can be offset it towards a distance and then taken towards the top so that there is a vent directly given upset now all the flows can be connected to that and there is nothing here and then there is a extension or something like that here so it can be offset it. the whole thing can be offset it and the vent can be connected through the same stack towards the top same way offsetting offset venting not required here uh, this offset venting this cross venting is not required uh, if it is not required it can be done directly as a same pipe which is taken directly then we can also have individual vent say for example for one sink we can have an ad, uh, individual vent but this escape of uh, this thing has to be proper if it is inside the room then it is difficult to take the foul gases outside because when this cap is open then the smell is spread around so uh, very judiciously we will have to decide where can we choose individual vent because in individual vent what happens it is just next the vent is ne just next to the fixture it could be sink it could be any other thing so it, it is just next to the uh, fixture. So, this is something which we will have to uh, provide in semi open spaces. So, we can provide in semi open spaces. So, that completes your uh, module 3 um, with all the required uh, syllabus portions. So, we will continue further with the next module, module 4. Thank you.